Ok. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last talk of the evening. And uh, Edwin is going to talk about tales or fails from the trenches. So please give it up for Edwin van Andel. Hi, welcome. I'm Edwin. Um, and I was asked to do a talk here late at night, so I said, yeah, sure. And then he said, what talk are you going to do? And he said, oh, Phil's from the trenches. And I said, OK, I've done that on KPN. And then I found out today that a lot of stuff I used last year here, I put in the KPN talk I did last week. So I came here and I thought, that's not good. So for the last two hours, I've been like this, uh, trying to get myself together and trying to get a slide deck for you that I hope will be funny uh, and that will get you through the night to the, what's after me? The big pop quiz or something, right? The computer quiz. So I hope I will get you there. Uh, I've got, I think, 110 slides in 40 minutes, so we'll see. Uh, anybody on the 15, as always? No, probably not. Uh, if you have nightmares, talk to Dimitri. It's his fault I'm here. <laughs> um, who am I, Edwin? Uh, 1970s. It's a shame I missed Walter's talk because it was on old computing. I love old computing. I pushed a lot of buttons, of course, played with the old modems. Uh, lost a lot of floppies. When your mother picked up the phone, you know the whole stories. Uh, and now I work at Zerocopter where we combine all the hackers we can find, the best ones, and uh, yeah, hack the shit out of everybody. So when you do that, you get a lot of fails, a lot of good things, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my life. What do I do during the day? Well, basically this. Um, everything, nothing, uh, flying, talking to people, having fun at conferences like this. So I'm very happy to be here again, of course. Uh, if I have spare time, I'm a member of the Guild of the Grumpy Old Hackers. I don't know if you know it. It's basically Grumpy Old Hackers. Easy. Uh, and we try to help younger kids to go the right way. So if you find a database with credit card information, please don't use the credit cards. Please don't sell it to criminals, but uh, report it uh, to the company where you got it. And maybe you get a t-shirt, stuff like that. We help them. Uh, Dutch uh, Institute for Vulnerability Disclosure, of course. Uh, I think you will hear a lot about this later on, probably. No? Oh. Yes? Of course. Yeah, Dave Day over there. Uh, and member of the cavalry. Uh, I hope you know it. Uh, if you don't, please look it up. We can use all the help we, we, uh, we can get. Uh, we try to help medical device manufacturers, automotive manufacturers to be more secure. Um, be aware that a lot of stuff there is nasty. Uh, we had a talk with a car manufacturer three years ago, uh, and we said uh, we can hack your car because of the devices in there, and we can even steer the thing. And they say, yeah, we know. And we said, well, if you know it, why don't you fix it? And they said, well, it costs too much money. I have to get all my cars back, can't fix it remotely, so it will cost me too much money. But what if we kill somebody with your car? And then you get the brilliant answer, oh, we just paid the deceased family. So. If you're up for that, please join the cavalry and help us make the world a little bit more secure. But you're not here for that. Um, let's try to do some work. Uh, I hope I will make it and do a bit of fails. And of course, we have fails, we have questions. What's this? Come on, people. Oh, a new challenge. A new challenge? No. <laughs> Who said old? Oh, sorry. In the back. Oh, my mic is gone. No, it's there. This is old. Did I kill it? Yes. Fails. Sorry? Oh, it's back. Oh, and then it kills. Oh, nice. So if I don't want to, you don't want to hear me, I walk over there. Yeah, just point in that direction. So this is old. And this is 2000. And every, anybody know what it is? No? It's a directory traversal. And I think everybody knows what directory traversal is, right? You just do a little bit of dotting, some slashes, and you walk backwards in the web route. Basically, that's it. Then why, in 2019, do we have the same shit? <laughs> it's fucking 20 years ago. 20 years ago for the first directory to first vulnerability, and now we're having the same shit and everybody's hurting. It was this easy for the people who didn't know it. Just a couple of dots, a couple of slashes, a couple of directory names, and you can get whatever you want. It's sad, we should fix this shit. And when you look up the CVA database now, because I thought this was bad, uh, just a month ago, Juniper got the same thing. Why? Come on, people. We should fix shit like that, right? Phil, correct? 
I think it's a fail. All right, some funny then. This, what's this? For the Dutch guys. It's questions asked in our cabinet. And do you know where these questions were about? No. Nope. Yes. You got a shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's that easy. There you go. It was this lady. <laughs> questions in our cabinet about this lady. It's unbelievable. You know who she is, right? World's best hacker. 30 years. Everybody here knows her. Everybody loves her. She has given new definition to air gap networks. Do you know what it is? Airbag networks. We shoot the depth stuff like this, you know? And she al also said, and, and everybody probably knows this, that every hacker has an app on their cell phone. If they walk to an ATM, they get money out of the machine for free. Everybody has it. So raise your hand if you have it. Oh, I will talk to you guys later. I will. I've, I think you still need a drill. Come on, man. A drill, Raspberry Pi, USB key, it works. But some ATMs, I travel a lot, I take pictures of ATMs. Some are a bit more easy, like um, this one, for instance. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? And the other one was also fun. The more beer we drank, the harder it was not to pull the plug on that thing. It was very, very tempting. But as you know, she had the solution. So whatever Breno was telling you, you can fix it with That's it. <laughs> we need this in our life. Do you know she reminded me of this guy? Do you know this guy? <laughs> guy Goma? If you don't, please, please check this YouTube video. It's so awesome. He came into the BBC for a job as, a, I think, a janitor or something for cleaning. And he was waiting in the room for his job interview. And then somebody ran out and said, is Guy here? And he said, yep, yeah, I'm here. And he's escorted to the television. And he was interviewed on Apple iPhone security for 10 minutes. You have to check it. <laughs> it's really fucking awesome. Really awesome. But the best thing in the Kamervragen, in, in the, the questions that were asked to cabinet, was that there was a term in the document that I really, really love. And I think we created it. Four times, <laughs> four times it was in there. Sorry, Charlton. Four times. It was really brilliant. We about the other good, cyber cyber. Good, good cyber, bad cyber, right? OK, so if you bash somebody, which I just did, I shouldn't. I should also bash myself, right? And I do a lot of talks. Um, and I was giving a talk, I think, two weeks ago uh, at the, I think you call it the <coughs> Municipal, the Gemeente. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, and it was Waadhoeken, uh, and uh, I had a talk for all their members working there, all uh, public servants, and no computer security idea, a lot of people, and they said, make it so that it's close, because at Waadhoeken, we are a personal, close, and online municipal. And they sent me a PDF doc, and I thought, how can I get this close? So I looked at the PDF metadata, and there was a name in there from a lady. So I googled the lady, and there was a lot of information on the lady, um, even in the telephone grids, which is our dialing instrument, blah, blah, blah. So I had her phone number and her street address. So I had her house, <laughs> and I had her husband, who works for a very long time, by the way, at Achmea. Uh, and I had his mobile phone number. And while I was doing this, it hit home there, right? But there were also some people doing this. And I was also, OK, maybe I should be like this. And it turned out the lady had just been divorced. So putting her husband on there was not what she really wanted for the whole of the, <laughs> of the municipal. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Luckily, I'm not the only guy or girl who fails, right? We have one up here. This guy, you know this guy, Chris van Hof? He does hack, hack talk. Do you know that? Hack talk? It's really cool, really cool. It's, it's a show, and then uh, every, I think he did it every month, and now he's done it every quarter. So he was thinking about, OK, I should put out new flyers. You have seen them down below. But he was drunk when he pressed print. So they're brilliant, but the date is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> In his drunk, he pressed, he just copied and pasted the old format, put it on a new one, pressed 1,000 copies, please, and then figured out that it's the 20th and not the 13th. 
So thank you for not failing, letting me fail alone. Thank you for the commercial. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, uh, BNR, Brandon was also talking about the radio station. They uh, asked me some time as well. And one time in Privacy Week, they asked me to come there and to check on two of their employees what I could find on the internet. So I did that and there was a lady there and uh, I couldn't find much about her, basically nothing. So I was really, it was really cool. So I, I talked to her in the studio live and I said, well, you're really, really good because I couldn't find anything, just that your husband is, is um, yeah, Mark or something and you have two kids, Jantje, Pietje. And she said, how do you know that? I said, well, it's on your Facebook. And she said, I don't have Facebook. <laughs> I said, yes. And then there was a riot in the BNR office because BNR makes Facebook pages for their personnel. <laughs> It was fun. The other guy was easy to find, by the way. It was very, very easy. But I, I was talking there about, uh, for instance, the LinkedIn database, right? Everybody knows the LinkedIn database. The LinkedIn hack 2013, a lot of passwords still being cracked. So if you look up somebody, you can find it over there very easy. So I talked about that. I talked about how big the database was. Uh, I talked about if you want to see if you're in there by the time you had to look at have I been pwned. So it was a good interview. It was tweeted a lot, etc. And a couple of weeks, I think a week later, there was news from another news agency. And they hacked some Twitter accounts of Dutch politicians. And they did it because they found the LinkedIn database. So they listened to my radio speech uh, and they used that to hack into Twitter accounts. And I was like, wow, that's a bit nasty. So I looked them up and said, yo, I think you have to fix some shit yourself because their LinkedIn accounts were public. And they were pissed at me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's fucking stupid. You fucking fail yourself, right? Don't do shit like that if you don't know it. And right, we hackers, yeah? We think differently, correct? No. 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 <laughs> of course not. So basically, this is my fail again, right? We don't think differently. OK, we don't. Let's see if this works. So we're locked, but there's a rec sensor up there. <laughs> you know why he's happy? Because we're at a wedding. And he said, I can open the bank with whiskey. And we said, nah. And he said, if, <laughs> if I can succeed, I get free drinks for the entire night. And we were at a wedding. So we said, yeah, sure. So we filmed it. And he's happy because he gets free drinks. We think different. You shouldn't put, if you, if, if, you, if you know we think differently, if we have an office with hackers, right? And then we get a new coffee machine. And it's one with RFID. You shouldn't do that. That doesn't work. It's just fucking two bites. And then we have coffee for everybody, for free, the rest of our lives. It works awesomely. And there was even a little screen, so we tried to put hello world or hack the planet, but then the machine crashes and they have to come from the factory to restore it. So don't do <laughs> stuff like that. But what I, where I want to go is it, it's not just hackers who think differently. There are also like bosses who think differently. And I like that. Not always, but because sometimes it gets you fails. For instance, if you run a company with a lot of windmills connected and you are in the US, um, and you're running this and all goes smoothly and then somehow you find out you get hacked. So, ooh, scary, we got hacked, but nothing really happens. But you have to call a security company, right? So they did, security company came and they said, how do you know you are hacked? And their answer was, well, our Windows machines are up to date. And this was never the case. Because we have a very lacking IT staff, and they have no time to update our machines. And now all our machines are up to date. So we're hacked, but ah, can you look what they're doing? So investigation, blah, 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 and they found out they were mining Bitcoin. So they came back to the company, to the board, to the manager, and said, well, we found out they're mining Bitcoins. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Cool. <laughs> Let them see there. Every machine was up to date because they didn't want any other Bitcoin mining hackers on the machine, so they fixed everything. Perfect, let them be there. Doesn't bother us. Perfect. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
thinking power. different. Sorry? Blockchain power. Yeah, blockchain power. Yeah, fix it with blockchain. <laughs> it's basically Rion probably who did it, right? <laughs> wow. Okay, getting insights here. Right, what do I have some more? Fails. Um, let's see, what is the ultimate weapon of the hacker? The mind, the Jedi mind, no. What is, uh, let, let me rephrase this. It's not the, the hacker, um, it's like what is the most easy weapon to use if you want to get somewhere? No. Social engineering, and what do you use for social engineering if you do it the quickest? Who said phone? Number one. There you go. It's the phone. The phone is the best weapon. You just call. And if you do it right, you do it with caller ID. So you look up a company and you find out what their numbers are and you put a fake phone number and you call and you put some tools on like this. Do you know this one? Yeah, Social Engineering Toolkit. It's from my good friend, you probably know as well, Dave Kennedy. And he's got a two minute short example on He's how what's it known works. as a social engineer or a people hacker. His craft is to dupe you into doing things and sharing information you probably shouldn't. Can I just get your, your, your credit card number? Some use it for illegal activity. In David's case, companies pay him to find out if employees are leaving the company vulnerable. He and his team show us how it's done. Step one, spoof his number so it looks like he's calling from inside the company, and then call tech support. Hello, are you there? Hello? Hi, this is Ken. How may I help you? I was wondering if uh, you can uh, take a look at a website I'm trying to get to. It's for a uh, big customer thing I'm working on for Monday, and uh, I can't seem to get to the website from my computer. Sure. Uh, what's the website? I'll see if I can get to it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate the help. I mean, it could be a stupid thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really suck with computers. but uh, So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's www survey that's a s u r v e y dash pro dot com yeah i got a prompt to open i uh, just clicked open and i'm at the site now here's what the it guy doesn't realize by clicking that link he's just given david full access to his computer uh, yeah. whoa okay that's weird i just hit it and it works and it seems like it's working fine now awesome well, i don't know what you did man but i really appreciate the help <laughs> hey no problem that was easy that was it that was easy we're on his computer right now nice right it's that easy. Just use the phone. Try everything. So when you're in, how do you get passwords? Mimikatz? Mimikatz, always. But what's the better way? Ask. Put up a password change up sheet. This works. If you like to change your password, please fill in your name, the server's your old password, and your preferred new password. Try this. It works. And I like the note, come see me, Sean, you know? <laughs> and then the next question we always get, yeah, it's stupid. We have those bring your device rules, but I can't bring my device and I have an office iPad and I go home and my kids can't play with it. Do you know why your kids can't play with your office iPad? Because reincarnation is not proven yet. <laughs> That's why. It costs you a lot of iPad. And I always think people who do this are the kind of coworker you get in your head that, that always helps and always wants to be gentle and wants to do the right thing, but shouldn't be near computers. You know, a bit like these guys. <laughs> <coughs> yes. These are the same guys that when I'm bored and I'm in a plane, I sometimes play around. So I found out there was something called a Twitter scraper. So I played with it, just put one rule, tried um, card and number is in Twitter scrape. You get a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of cards, but also this one. I, I really love this one. I'm not sure what it is. Is there someone from the US here, but a nectar card? Yeah. yeah, is it good? Loyalty it's a loyalty card, but it's pretty popular. Yeah. You find a lot of shit on that nectar card. It's really cool. This one, pretty nice. Um, it asks for a DM for your network card. And you know what the reply is of those people? What's DM? Anyway. Here's my card number. <laughs> it's that easy. It's so much fun. This one also. Please DM us your ID number, customer number, and smart card number. My ID number, my customer number, my smart card number. It's that easy. This one, also fun. Yeah. Can I see the back? I like your front. Yeah, sure. Fail. <laughs> right. Um, and then we have something else. And it's basically not a fail because we all love them, but 
they make things happen that you're not too happy with. Do you know what I'm talking about? What do you love the most in your surroundings when you get home? Tranquility? No. No. Not family. No. <laughs> Sorry? Animals. Yes. Animals. They're very cute. But they also kill shit. You know? Have you seen this? The biggest causes of damage to fiber networks. One, animals. Unbelievable. Uh, Time Warner Cable had to replace 87 miles of cable in Western New York due to squirrels. Rats knocked out internet access for virgin media customers in parts of Scotland. Twice in two days. It's horrible. It's horrible. And there's this. I, I just saw this video, I think, a day ago, and it's, it's so brilliant. You have to see this. This is a woodpecker who um, finds a big Wi-Fi transmitter. Yeah, this is just the start. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. My Wi-Fi doesn't work. Go ahead. It's not loose. <laughs> Fix. <laughs> 300 plus pounds. You know how big the bird is? Like this. Unbelievable. He had help. Right? Yeah, he had help. They made a lot of holes. What's this? <laughs> Alexa, why do you use it? What do you use it for? <laughs> Nothing, right. You ask, hey, Alexa, how's the weather? And she should say, look outside, you moron, right? But she doesn't. She says the weather in Fahrenheit. Yeah, brilliant. Um, in the US, however, you use this. Uh, but again, People miss it because in the US, you know, right, you're out of milk and you say, Alexa, I'm out of milk. And the next day, Amazon Prime delivers milk or whatever, toilet paper. We forget or we are hacked by animals, right? And you know this one. This is the bird who ordered more than 10,000 rolls of toilet paper <laughs> because he said, Alexa, I'm out of toilet paper. And now there are a lot of people here because I did this slide last year and they say, no, I don't believe this. It's real. I've got a video. Okay. Brilliant, right? <laughs> Even the okay. And this is also killing us. <coughs> and why? Because it's a DDoS of cat and dog pictures. That's why this is clogging our bandwidth and people don't get it. There are even elderly people who are now mistakenly thinking that animals are being built by us. Or, well, let's just show it. It's so sad. It's sad, right? I'm, I'm very, very sad by this. Right, Phils, um, hardware people in the room? Because I couldn't find enough, enough hardware fill pictures. Just a few, like these USB keys. Yeah? Sorry? Yeah, this amateur. Yeah, I need pictures of those. Orion Express, you can buy them. Yeah, just like on AliExpress, you buy stuff like this, right? It explodes when you plug it in. It's fun. It's not fireworks. It's just power supplies. It smells better than fireworks. It smells better. Well, if you're talking about smelling, what a brilliant bridge. How do you fix this? Well, like this. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is how you fix it. But, but you mean more pictures like this, right? It's just sad. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, what do we have more? What's some fails? Oh yeah, buildings, can, can buildings fail? Yes. Yeah, they're commercial display shitty things, crashing. Right, fails. Um, we do bug bounties, of course, at Zero Copter, so we have to do some bug bounty fails as well. But the first thing I thought was this t-shirt. I really like this. <laughs> That's a new definition. I really like this. Clients, <laughs> however, don't like this shirt. <laughs> but they use this a lot, and it's killing us, you know? Um, other things that are killing us is if, if you do responsible disclosure and you're in it for the yeah, for, for cooperating with the hackers, then there's also the rule that says if you have fixed it, I may write about it, right? I may up my level by posting about the beautiful thing I found and how we fixed this together and you are now safer as a company and you should share this data with other companies so everybody can get happier. It's difficult. It's very difficult. Um, this is mostly the attitude they have, and I have a story from Jonathan Baumann, but I can't talk about it unless somebody in the audience calls out the name of the company, because I'm not allowed to... I, uh, who said IKEA? Thank you! <laughs> Brilliant! Well, it was IKEA. Um, and they scanned IKEA, of course, and they found some interesting domains, but he found the bathroom planner. Uh, and it's nice, bathroom planner, you can click together your own bathroom, brilliant, and then you can create a PDF. So that you can go to the store with all the components you clicked and then get them immediately. It saves you a lot of time and hassle, brilliant. So he looked at the um, creation of the PDF and he decoded it, it was base 46, and he said, oh, that's interesting, maybe I can put some stuff in there. So he tried image source a to save password. No, it doesn't work. No, no, it didn't work. No. So that's brilliant. However, if you put a notation file, it works. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So then you get inject file your combination, EC password, thank you, IKEA. Can I get a bouncy? No. Um, IKEA had fixed this, and then I think it took six months of mailing back and forth before he was allowed to put this online. They don't want this, and a lot of companies still don't want it. If you don't want your stuff published, maybe you shouldn't do responsible disclosure, I don't know. But you should think about stuff like this before you go it. You should hug us like you mean it, right? That's the most important thing. Right, APIs. Do I have a shirt? Oh, one more. APIs stand for? What? Well, no. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 What's the sentence? Don't you know this one? It's so it's so easy. No, it's this. Yeah, you laugh, but it's true. That's what APIs are for, phoning infrastructure. For instance, we were asked uh, for a client to do a test of their monitoring system. So they had a new uh, monitoring system in place and they wanted to see if they could detect hackers. So we were given shell accounts and we tried this. And we were like, oh, they have monitoring systems. So we should be very stealthy. And stealthy hacking old way is just this, right? LS, LS Minel, go inside, look at the file, go back, go to the next one. as quiet as you can. And then the new hackers say, oh, you just run a tool. We're like, <laughs> well, detect it's gone, you know? So try it very slowly. And in the end it worked because we found a file um, which got some Chef data collector tokens in it. Do you know Chef? It's automation tooling, it publishes stuff and etc. And with this token, there was possible to do monitor information back to the server. That's cool, so what we tried is can we do more than just other things? And we do it on the paths which the server already has to the monitoring server, so it shouldn't be detected. So we tried the token to see it would ac be accepted. It said, okay. So we tried if we could create our own notice, and it said, okay. <laughs> it's that easy. 
So please, people, also remember to keep your API keys away from prying eyes. So don't just put them on the server because it's just a monitoring key. No, it could be very, very sensitive and it's, again, a bit of a fail. Can we fix shit like this in the end? All the things? Yes, we can. But why? How do we start? Where do we start? Praying? <laughs> Who said praying? <laughs> no, somebody said praying, he gets a shirt. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I think we should start here, in the boardroom. Uh, but then if we try this, we try it mostly like this. Right? We talk about uh, social engineering, cloud security, nation state attacks, smart blah, 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 blah. And then the board is like this, <laughs> which doesn't work. So the board wants us to do like this. So who should we send? <laughs> yes. We should try this. No, and we should basically talk to them like we can map it to GDPR because that's something they get. They get two things. They get GDPR and they get if it costs money or are losing customers. So business impact is very important for them. So we should try to move it a bit to the GDPR style. We should try to talk about maturity instead of attacks and stuff like this. We are now here. We want to go here. And otherwise the business impact will go like this. So let's put it that way. If we can go there, it works. So that's one group, the board, and then there's another group we have to help, and those are? Employees. Not the users. <laughs> Not the managers. IT, IT no. Right. No. 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 Whoa. Developers. <laughs> developers, developers, developers. We, we need to help them a bit. And we need to tell them that if they have a perfectly aligned uh, SDLC or security washing street or whatever they call it that every tool in there is brilliant but the maximum maximum you get out of it is 50 percent because a tool doesn't know if your social security number is legal on that page or if it's illegal on that page tools don't know that so there's 50 percent flaws and there's 50 percent business logic flaws so we still need manual verification and then they say, oh, yeah, but we do a pen test. Right, you do a pen test once every year, and then every two weeks you develop new software and you publish it. So there's a little bit of gap. So look further than that. Look at responsible disclosure. Look at bug bounties and try your way over there. And then people say, right, let's do bug bounties and put 300,000 hackers on there. That doesn't work because your IT staff and your developers will be like this. So please also take in consideration how many reports can you handle. It's very, very important. And if you do all those brilliant things, also keep in mind that they have to fit in your stupid model. And I really hate this slide because this is really a marketing slide, but this. Ugh. But it has to be in there. I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> and if you're a developer, please look at the brilliant software, like for instance this, OWASP SKF, right? Security Knowledge Framework. From start to finish, it will help you, advise you, and guide you for free in whatever you're developing and how you get it secure from a start. Try this stuff. Don't be like these guys. <laughs> Yay, so do. Because if you're still in this level, then you're high up in this one. And I really love this one. <laughs> the cybersecurity pain skill. It's brilliant. If you're in red, you become a case study. You use passwords like root store admin Kelvin. We're fine, and we just fired the CISO. You know, try to get more to the left. Proactive, not enough stuff, 2FA, pairing, whatever, do it. And you will be more relaxed. You can just enjoy life. You know, if I want to enjoy life, I do like my friend Dave, this. You know? Look at a good movie. You know what the movie is, right? Come on, the beeper is from? Hackers. Hackers. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't have any more shirts, but you get a beer. And what's the thing behind this? Thank you. Sorry? <laughs> True. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 
But it's nice, yeah? It's nice. Nice things, relaxation. Let's try it that way. Nice things, relaxation. And you said, hackers, I want to touch on one more point before I leave, and that is this one, hack right. I don't know if you know it, but I'm, I'm told you in front that I'm a member of the Guild of the Grumpies, <coughs> where we help younger kids. Hack right is something we developed together with police <coughs> and, um, how do you call it, prosecution's office. Um, if somebody is between 13 and 21, I think, and they are arrested for a cyber crime, and it's their first one, they don't go to jail, but instead they go to companies like us. Um, they have to write what they did, they have to talk to the people they hacked and, and uh, look at the damage they caused, they have to work on papers with us, they have to learn how we do pen testing, how you can ethically move instead of using it for the wrong side. And the idea is to get them straight and to get them back to into the market. This is something you can join as a company. It's hack right if you have places like for developers, for security people, for whatever, and you want to do it, it's really, really cool to do it. You will learn a lot as well, and you will work together with prosecution officers, police, etc., to just help a kid go back. So try to do it. We signed. It was fun. Uh, and what I want to say, of course, as always, as we close, is please have fun. And um, yeah, you are hackers, so just hug yourself. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you so much, uh, Edwin, for this great talk. Tomorrow, uh, Hackride will have a talk as well. Floor Janssen and Johanna Spormans will be here. So if you want to learn more about Hackride uh, tomorrow afternoon, there will be a talk. So look at the schedule and uh, yeah, check that out. <laughs>